Having smart home technology is great and can make things easier in your day-to-day life, from automating your lights when you come home, to notifying you when your washing machine stops. But something that a lot of people overlook or don't realize they can do is that they can have their home help protect itself against disasters. That's why in this video we will be going over a few different ways to be alerted if your plumbing springs a leak or if your home is flooding. We will also go over a possible way to stop a flood from getting worse if it's being caused by plumbing that has broken. This is important because something like a burst pipe can cause tens of thousands of dollars in damage in a very short time frame if not stopped. Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. If you're new to my channel and like interesting gadgets or smart home technology that help make your life easier, consider subscribing to the channel for new content. And if you already are, welcome back! Over the last several years, I've been using leak detectors around my home to help alert me if something goes wrong with my plumbing. These work by having two or more contacts that will trigger the sensor if they sense moisture. These have actually been around for a very long time even before smart home technology was really a thing. Instead, they would have a built-in alarm that would go off if they were triggered. While helpful and better than nothing, they didn't really do much if you weren't home or if you didn't happen to hear the alarm for some reason. With a smart home connected leak detector, you can now be notified on your phone when a leak is detected, have some type of event trigger, or even shut off your main water line if you want. This means you can be notified of an issue when you're away from home or just automatically stop a leak from getting worse and saving thousands of dollars from possible water damage. Let's first take a look at the different water leak sensors I've been using and how I've been using them. First is the Zigbee water leak sensor from Samsung SmartThings. I primarily have the Gen 2s and won't be spending too much time on them as they are now discontinued. But they do have two contacts on the bottom of the sensor and run off a single CR2 battery. I have several around my house and they have been running for several years without issues. With their form factor, they are great for under sinks or wash tubs, behind toilets, and under or near bathtubs and showers. Third generation SmartThings leak sensor is also Zigbee, and not only has two contacts on the bottom that are actually closer compared to the Gen 2, but also have two contacts on the top. I'm not really sure how useful the top contacts are, but it's another point that could provide a quicker trigger if a leak or flood occurs. I do like that the contacts on the bottom are closer. From a non-scientific viewpoint, that should mean that less water should be required to trigger them. The Gen 3 sensor also uses a single CR2 battery. Battery life is pretty good for the SmartThings leak detectors, as they typically last between a year to a year and a half, before requiring a new battery. Overall, I like the SmartThings leak sensors as they are small, they've worked well so far for me, and I haven't had any issues with them. Both generations also have a temperature sensor, which could be handy depending on your use cases as well. The other leak sensor I primarily use in my home is the Leak Sensor by Dome Home Automation. Unlike the SmartThings leak sensors, the Dome sensors are Z-Wave Plus. They also feature three contacts instead of two. The main advantage over the Dome leak sensor is that it comes with a remote probe that can attach to the sensor. This allows for you to have a leak detection in harder to reach places, such as behind a washer, behind a refrigerator, or maybe behind a toilet that's in a tight location. With how long the probe cable is, you may not even have to remove the remote probe when changing the battery, which is also a nice plus for the sensor. When using the remote probe, the contacts on the sensor itself are still usable, but are raised. Because of this, you would need a lot of water to trigger the contacts on the sensor itself, so do keep that in mind when placing it. The Dome Home Automation Leak Sensor also has a built-in alarm that can be triggered when water is detected. For me, I've been using them because of the included remote sensor probe, and I actually have the probe sitting halfway down my sump pump well. The reason for this is because I want to be alerted as soon as possible if my sump pump fails, or is getting overrun. Being notified as soon as possible will give me the best chance I could have at either mitigating a flood or at least relocate things that could end up getting destroyed. I have one in each of my sump pump wells and have been using them for a bit over a year now without any issues. If you'd like an in-depth review of the dome leak sensors, I'll have a link in the description below for my video on them. If you use different leak sensors or have any experience with the two that I have mentioned, let me know in the comments below, as I'd love to know what others are using. For me, I have sensors behind all of my toilets, under most of my sinks, under all of my wash tubs, under my refrigerator, next to my washer, in between my hot water tank and furnace, and one in each of my sump pumps. Originally, I only had one under the wash tub in my basement, and one next to my hot water tank, but a few months after setting it up, I actually had a plumbing issue that caused my wash tub to back up and start pouring onto the basement floor. Within a few minutes of this happening, the leak sensor under the wash tub triggered alerting me through a notification on my phone. At first I was kind of surprised and hesitated going to check on it because I assumed it was a false alarm. Luckily, I decided moments later to go check and sure enough the wash tub was overflowing. Without being alerted to the issue, there was a very high chance that the issue would have not been discovered for a day or two, which would have most likely destroyed a lot of things. But because I was alerted shortly after the flooding started, I was able to get the plumbing problem solved without any real damage. After that, I started purchasing more leak sensors to put around my home as I saw the value of having an early warning of possible flooding. 
While for my smart home, I primarily use SmartThings as my hub to accomplish this, but you can use pretty much any hub that will allow for Zigbee or Z-Wave leak sensors to attach to it, and allow for trigger device notifications. There are also Wi-Fi leak sensors available that could accomplish this task as well, but they typically don't allow for more complex automation rules or triggering of other events. Also, with Wi-Fi sensors, you will be relying on having an internet connection to be alerted unless the sensor has a built-in alarm. Whereas with a smart hub, depending on which hub it is and how you have it set up, you may still be able to get some kind of notification even if it is not on your phone in the event of an internet outage. Setting up phone notifications in SmartThings is very simple. All you need to do is have your leak sensor paired with your hub, make sure you have SmartThings Home Monitor set up for leaks, and make sure that you have notifications enabled for SmartThings Home Monitor. To verify if you have SmartThings Home Monitor set up for leaks, you should see the water droplet icon green like currently shown. If the icon is gray and says that the monitor is off when you click on it, then you'll need to enable leaks for SmartThings Home Monitor. To enable it, click on SmartThings Home Monitor to be brought to the main section for it. From here, click on the cog on the top right hand side of the screen. And then click on the toggle next to leaks so that it is enabled. Going back to the SmartThings Home Monitor section, you should see that the leak icon is now green and that it says all sensors are connected. Next, we want to verify your notifications by clicking on the hamburger menu on the top left hand of the main screen. And then clicking on the cog on the right hand side of the screen. Next, you'll click on Notifications, where you will want to verify that notifications for SmartThings Home Monitor are turned on. As long as everything is set up correctly, you should get a notification right on your phone if a leak is ever detected. But what if you don't always have your phone on you, or you're constantly getting notifications and don't always check your phone right away? If you have other smart devices in your home, you can take advantage of them as well. For example, if you have any RGB smart lights in your home, you can make them turn blue to indicate water is detected. Or if you have smart bulbs that aren't RGB, you could have them flash several times to indicate something is happening that requires your attention. Another way to be notified could be through a smart assistant. If you have Google Home or Amazon Smart Assistant, you could trigger them to give an audible notification if a leak is detected. A third possible way of being notified is if you have a smart alarm. As long as it's connected to your smart hub, you should be able to trigger it when a leak is detected to help get your attention. All of the different ways to be alerted of a leak that I just mentioned can be completed through SmartThings, either through the built-in automation engine for SmartThings or through a smart app such as WebCore, and should easily be accomplished through other smart home hubs such as Hubitat with its rule engine. For me personally, I have all my smart home automations running through WebCore. I find that WebCore allows for a more streamlined approach to my smart home automation tasks and allows for things to be accomplished that the SmartThings automation engine cannot do at this time. The use of WebCore allows for more advanced automations, such as having a phone alert trigger if specific sensors are triggered. But if multiple sensors are triggered, or if one is triggered for a certain amount of time, start an alarm or change the color of a smart bulb. Being notified of a possible plumbing issue is very helpful. But what if you're too far away from your home to do anything about a possible flood happening? Or what if you're asleep and the notifications you do have set up don't wake you up? This is where a smart water valve comes into play. With a smart water valve, you are able to trigger the valve to be closed or open either through automation, a voice assistant if it's connected to your smart home hub, or through your smart home hub's app. Smart valves come in several different flavors, from ones that sit directly in line, to closed systems that will automatically trigger when a leak sensor detects water and doesn't require a smart hub, to ones that usually can be used to retrofit a standard water valve into a smart water valve. After a bit of research, I decided to go with the smart water valve by Dome Home Automation. The main reason for my choice was that it wasn't too pricey, can be installed without any plumbing work as long as you have the proper valve installed, and it allows for me to remove it easily if it ever fails or if I ever move. The valve works by mounting it to the plumbing and having an arm that sits around a ball valve. The arm then moves to shut off the valve or turn it on. Installation is pretty straightforward, you just have to make sure power is nearby. Another thing I like about the dome water valve is that it includes a way to easily disengage the arm to manually turn on or shut off your valve. The Dome Smart Valve is Z-Wave Plus, which allows for me to directly connect it to my SmartThings hub to include my home automation rules. And with it being Z-Wave Plus, it can be paired with several other smart home hubs as well. This is great if I ever change to a different hub. As part of my water leak detection, home automation, I have my water valve automatically shut off if specific water sensors trigger. Right now, this pretty much includes all of my water sensors, except for the two by my sump pumps. I can't think of a scenario where either would trigger and I would want my water to shut off as them being triggered would most likely indicate the pump failed and not that I have a plumbing issue. If you can think of a reason why I may want to do it differently though, let me know in the comments below. My water leak detection automation also causes my Google Home to give an audible voice notification to let me know that water was detected and the automation will also send a notification to my phone. While all of the automation can be completed with multiple rules in the SmartThings automation engine, I prefer having just a single piston within WebCore. 
This allows for me to know where anything relating to the leak automation is and easily make any changes to it, such as if I ever want to add a smart siren into my home that gets triggered, or maybe turn on the lights to let me know a leak has been detected, which I am considered doing for either of my sump pump leak detectors. Having a smart water valve installed can also be great for a location that may not be visited as often, such as a cabin or a vacation home, as you are able to remotely shut off the water, and if set up with leak detectors, you can even be notified of a problem. Having leak sensors in your home, along with a smart water valve, is a great way to take full advantage of having smart home technology and can be used to save you literally tens of thousands of dollars in property damage and prevent the loss of important items. While I only had a single incident with the wash tub in my basement backing up, having purchased all the sensors I have today and a smart valve has been a very wise investment in protecting my home and my belongings, and really is something anyone with a smart home setup should consider. I would love to know what other smart home tech or home automations you have set up and are using, so let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. I'll have links in the description below for any items I covered in this video, and if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release a new video. Thank you for watching.